In this lesson, we are going to study transformation of graphs. Let us consider the graph of f of x equals x squared. It's given by this red curve over here. What we want to do next is to consider the graph of f of x plus 2. This is our new function, or in other words, this is our f of x is x squared, so x squared plus 2. In order to do this, let us first get some points from our original graph x squared. So I have my tables here. So here are some of the points. Now, what will happen if we get x squared plus 2? These are your y values. All right. So for this case, this is y equals x squared and this is now your y equals x squared plus 2. So meaning to say from here, from this column to this column, you simply added 2 everywhere, right? So that's why your 4 plus 2 will become 6, right? But take note that your x coordinate is still equal to negative 2. So that's why you have the point negative 2, 6. Here you have negative 1, 3. From negative 1, the original is here, you add 2. Here, 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. And therefore, here is the graph of x squared plus 2. Everything just got moved up by two units. This is your y equals f of x. And this graph over here is y equals f of x plus 2. What will happen if we have x squared minus 1? So remember that your f of x is x squared. Next, we want to consider it when we have y equals f of x minus 1. Or again, remember that f of x is x squared, so that's x squared minus 1. So just like what we had earlier from the original f of x over here, from x squared, now you want x squared minus 1. So that's why from here to here, everything will just be subtracted by 1. So that's why you have 4, 3, 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes negative 1, and so on. So going back to this graph over here, 4 will now become 3. Remember that the x coordinate does not change, only the y coordinate gets affected. For this one, 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes negative 1, 1 becomes 0, and so on. And if we plot for all points, we get this green graph over here. Now, similarly, what happened there is that everything just moved down by 1 unit. So here is a summary of what we just did earlier. When you have the graph of f of x plus c, you can get it from the original. f of x, you just shift it vertically. This means that whenever you have f of x plus c, what gets affected? Only the y coordinates. Remember that this is your y. You are adding c to all the y coordinates. And if this c over here is positive, you go up. And if c is negative, you go down. Here are the graphs that we have discussed earlier. So next, we want to consider the graph of f of x plus or minus c. Take note, this is different from the first one. Here, c is added to f of x. But in this case, c gets added to x. And then you evaluate the function there. Here, let us consider the graph of f of x equals x cubed. It's given by this blue graph over here. Similarly, we want to consider the graph of 
this one. What is x minus 1 cube? Take note that x minus 1 cube is equal to you replace x by x minus 1. So therefore here, x minus 1 cube is f of x minus 1. So just like what we did earlier, we will get sum of the points from f of x. What will happen if you get x minus 1 cube? Notice that the x coordinates was affected because, for example, this point, it went to this point. It moved by 1 unit to the right. This one moved here. This one moved here. And so does this one. That is true for all of the points. You can also notice that here. Look at this one. The x coordinates were affected. Earlier in your f of x, negative 8 occurs at negative 2. But this time around, your negative 8 occurs at negative 1. It means that for f of x minus 1, what happened? You move 1 unit to the right. What about if we consider the graph of x plus 1 cube? Notice that x plus 1 cube is f of x plus 1. So similarly, we want to get the graph of that function. So if we use our tables, we get this one. And what happened here? Everything got moved one unit, but this time around to the left. Everything gets moved to the left. Here is a summary of what we did earlier when you want to sketch the graph of f of x plus c. The original graph f of x will just be shifted horizontally to the left or to the right depending on the sign of c. So remember when you have plus, for example, f of x plus 3, if it's 3, you go to the left. If it's f of x minus 3, you go to the right. So it's like the opposite, all right? Because some of you might think that if it's positive, you go to the right. And if it's negative, you want to go to the negative, correct? Because if you look at your number line, this is 0. Everything here is positive and then everything here is negative. But for translations of functions, the other way happens. And here are the functions that we obtained earlier. Notice that when you have f of x plus c, what gets affected? Only the x coordinates get affected. That's why your movement is horizontal because you're moving along the x-axis. If you compare it with f of x plus c, the y coordinates get affected. That is the reason why you are moving vertically. You're going up or down. Whereas here, you're going to the right or to the left. What do you think will happen if we consider the graph of y equals negative f of x? Notice that the negative appears outside. So what does that mean? What will be affected? Will it be the x or the y coordinates? We will see that. Only the y coordinates will be affected because this is outside. This is from, from your original y. You just multiply everything by negative 1. So for example, let us consider the graph of f of x equals x minus 1 squared plus 1. What we want to do next is to get the graph of y equals negative f of x. So this means that I will just multiply negative 1 to this. So we now get negative of x minus 1 squared minus 1. So when we want to consider y equals negative f of x, all the y coordinates will simply be multiplied by negative 1. So for example, the y coordinate here is 5. So it will now go to negative 5. 
this 2 over here will be multiplied by negative 1. So that's negative 2. So this 1 over here will go to negative 1 similarly and so on. And therefore, we get this graph. So therefore, the graph of negative f of x simply reflects f of x over the x axis just like what we had earlier the red graph here that's negative f of x it's just the reflection of f of x along the x axis now what about if we want y equals f of negative x the negative is inside your function f meaning to say the input gets affected what will happen there since the negative appears inside, only the x-coordinates will be affected. So for example, we have the graph of y equals absolute value of x minus 1 over here. That means that f of negative x, we will replace all the x by negative x. So this is negative x minus 1. So what happens is that your graph will be reflected along the y-axis. So for example, this point over here, the x-coordinate is 1. It will now go to negative 1. What about, let me just get another point from the green graph. Let's say this point, that is 3. When you reflect it along the y-axis, it will go to negative 3. So that's why you have this point. If you have this point here, 0, when you reflect it along the y-axis, it will just stay there. So that's why you have this one. Here is the graph that we had earlier. Now what about if we have c times f of x? So similarly, take note that C appears outside. So this means you just multiply C to all the Y coordinates. And because you multiply C to the Y coordinates, it's either you will stretch the graph or you will shrink it. So, for example, you have 2 times f of x. You multiply it by 2, so everything will be multiplied by 2. You will be stretching the graph. Let me show that in the next example. So, here I have the graph of f of x equals x cubed. We want to consider the graph of y equals 2 times f of x or that is 2x cubed. So from here, look at the points. You just multiply all the y coordinates by 2. So for example, let's take this point that's at negative 1. You multiply negative 1 by 2, so it will now be negative 2. This point 0 here times 2 is still 0. And this point 1 will now go to 2. So if you continue that process, you will get this graph. So as you notice, you stretch the graph vertically. So what if we consider y equals 1 half f of x? So similarly, all the y coordinates get multiplied by one half. So, for example, here negative eight will go to negative four, negative one will go to negative one half, zero will still stay there, one will go to one half, and eight here will go to four. So, we are shrinking the graph. So here is the graph that we obtained. 
So here is a summary of what we did. So remember that when you multiply c to f of x, only the y coordinates get affected and that is the reason why you have a stretching or a shrinking. Of course, the next problem to consider is when you multiply c inside. So you have f of c of x. Again, since c occurs inside, only the x coordinates will be affected and let's see what happens. So here my f of x is the absolute value of x and this is now absolute value of 2x is f of 2x. I have here the table of values for 2x. Let's see what happened here. Now recall that when we had c times f of x, you multiply c to the y coordinates, right? However, if you have f of cx, you multiply 1 over c to the x coordinates. Here at this point, your x is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2, so that's why it's at negative 1. Alright, look at this one. Negative 4, the x-coordinate here is negative 4. You divide it by 2, so the new x-coordinate will be at negative 2. What can we expect now about the graph of f of 1 half x? Remember that your c here is 1 half. So therefore, your 1 over c is equal to 2, which means that all x coordinates of your original graph will be multiplied by 2. You always multiply it by the reciprocal. So let's try to do that. So for example, here x is negative 2. You multiply it by 2. So it will go here. This is negative 4. Your x is negative 4. So it will go to x equals negative 8 and so on. This is at negative 1 times 2, all right, and so on and so forth. At 1, this one, multiply it by 2. So you get those points. This is the graph of y equals 1 half x. So here is what will happen when you have c inside when you multiply c to your input what happens is that when c is greater than one it shrinks why does it shrink remember that for this one x gets multiplied by one over c and since c is greater than one one over c is less than one so that's why you have a shrinking here so this is shrink and then this one is you have stretching horizontally so here is a summary of what we had earlier you have a reflection when you have a negative if the negative appears outside of f of x you reflect it over the x-axis f of negative x you reflect it over the y-axis. Again, you don't have to remember. It might be confusing if you remember this, whether it's on the x-axis or y-axis. What you simply need to remember is that here, the y-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1. So if you do that, you will see that the graph will just be reflected over the x-axis. Here, this means that the x-coordinates gets multiplied by negative 1 also. Therefore, the graph of f of x will be reflected over the y-axis. And for all of this, again, this two, you have translations. But for this one, the y-coordinates get affected, and here, the x-coordinates 
get affected. And the stretching and the compressing as well. As long as you know which one gets affected here, the y coordinates get multiplied by c. Here, the x coordinates gets multiplied by 1 over c. Remember that. Here, you multiply it by c. But for x, you multiply it by 1 over c. So remember that whenever you have x, it's like the opposite will always happen. For example, here, oh, look at this one. If it's f of x plus c, what happens? You go to the left, right? If it's minus, you go to the right. For our first example, we want to sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 1. We are starting with the graph of f of x equals absolute value of x. We want to go to the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 1. So in order to do that, we do it step by step. So from absolute value of x, we go to absolute value of x plus 2. And then absolute value of x plus 2 minus 1. What happens from here to here? Take note that 2 got added to x. This is actually your f of x plus 2. Correct? So that means that you move 2 units where? 2 units to the... That's positive. So you go to the left. And then from here to here, from absolute value of x plus 2, you go to absolute value of x plus 2 minus 1. The only difference is that you subtracted by 1. So that means you move 1 unit down. Because only the y coordinate gets affected. Let us now proceed. So for example, this point 0, we go 2 units to the left. So 1, 2, and 1 unit down. So we're done with this point. Next, let's look at this point here. Two units to the left. So negative 1, 1, 2. You will be at negative 3 and then one unit down. So you will be here. What about this one? Two units to the left. One will go to 1, 2 at negative 1 and then one unit down. So it's here. You can already see the V part over there. So this is this graph and so on. So the big graph is the graph of y equals the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 1. For our next example, we are given the graph of y equals square root of x. We want to sketch the graph of y equals negative 2 times square root of x. We start with the graph of square root of x. How can we go from here to here? So first, we multiply it by 2. So 2 square root of x and then negative 2 square root of x. What happens from here to here? What gets affected? Take note that you multiply 2 outside. It already appeared outside. So what gets affected? Only the y coordinate. So from here to here, you multiply y coordinates by 2 and then from here to here from 2 it became negative 2 so you multiply y coordinates by negative 1 that is the same as reflecting it along which axis along the x axis an alternative of this one, multiplying y coordinates by 2 and then multiplying y coordinates by negative 1, you can go straight directly from square root of x to negative 2 square root of x by multiplying the y coordinates by negative 2. Let's do that. So here I will get this y coordinate is 1, so multiply it by negative 2, it will go here. 0 multiplied by negative 2 is still 0. What else? Here, the y coordinate is 2. You multiply it by negative 2, so it goes to negative 4. When x is 9, y is 3, so I will multiply it by negative 2. I will get 
negative 6. And therefore, this is now your graph. So what happens there? There is a reflection and a stretching. Because you have negative and then you multiply it by 2 also. For our last example, we want y equals square root of 2x. Again, we're given the graph of y equals square root of x. What happens from square root of x to square root of 2x? The 2 is inside your function, correct? So, what will be affected? The x coordinate will be affected. And x will be multiplied by, what is that? Remember that if it is inside, you will get the reciprocal. So x gets multiplied by 1 half. You're not changing the y coordinate. So for example here, 0 stays at 0. For this point, your x is 1. So therefore, when you multiply it by 1 half, it gets somewhere here. What else? This point here, the x coordinate is 4. You multiply 4 by 1 half, so you go to 2. And for this point over here, 8. 8 times 1 half is 4. So I think it's somewhere there. And there you go. This is now how your graph looks like. And again, if x got multiplied by 1 half, what happens to our graph? Is it a shrinking or a stretching? Since it got multiplied by 1 half, you have shrinking horizontally because we were changing the x coordinates.